Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 16th August 2022. So after watching this session completely, so you are going to get quote with explanation and editorials from The Hindu and also some important articles that are covered in our Hindu newspaper. Apart from that Hindu, we are also going to see some other articles in other newspapers also like Hindu or like Indian Express, PIB etc. And this one here is, we are also going to give you some mains practice questions and prelims practice questions at the end and we are also having a focus on vocabulary. So I want to give you a small task. So for next 6 seconds, so see blue color objects which are present around you. Just for 6 seconds. So count how many blue color objects are present around you. Okay, now stop. And how many green color objects are present around you. Okay, stop. So when I said to count blue color objects, so you didn't see about the other color objects like black, white, red, which are present around you. Your focus it is only on blue color. So when I said to stop seeing blue color objects and to see and count the green color objects. Yes, your focus, it is on green color object, right? So, I can say where your attention goes, your energy flows there. So, many of you in this preparation, you will be diverting from one thing to another thing, right? So, our brain will be, it is like a very, very fast object that will be diverted very fast. Right. So, but whenever your attention is there on that only one subject, then I can say you, you are not going to divert. So, wherever your attention is there, your energy flows there. So, try to focus on your preparation and try to achieve your goal of UPSC. Okay. So, now let us try to say first topic. So, first topic it is regarding India and European Union ties. So, this article is important from international relations which comes under your GS paper too. And this topic is exclusively important from your mains, from not your prelims. So now, let us try to see this topic in detail. So in this topic, we are going to talk about the background of India-European ties. And we are going to see some important areas of cooperation between India and European Union. And as well as we are going to also see what are the challenges between India and European Union ties. So first of all, if you see, actually India celebrated 75th year of independence, right? And this 75th year of independence also commemorates 60 years of diplomatic ties between India and European Union. So first of all, the cooperation agreement between India and European Union, which had been signed in year 1994. So, because of this cooperative, cooperative agreement, that is cooperation agreement between India and European Union, that led to emergence of bilateral relationship, that is beyond trade and economic cooperation. So, earlier we had ties regarding this trade and economic cooperation, but because of this cooperation agreement which signed in year 1994, so the relation, bilateral relation between India and European Union, now it is beyond trade and Euro economic cooperation. So, already we came up with this first India-European Union summit that held in June 2000 and because of this India-European Union summit, so it led to evolution of relationship between India and European Union. And also we came up with this fifth India-European Union summit in year 2004. So there we came with further more steps towards a good cooperation between India and European Union. So there we upgraded to strategic partnership in 2004 between India and European Union. And from the both the sides, that is from India and European Union side, we adopted joint action plan. Okay, we adopted joint action plan in 2005 and that led to strengthening dialogue and also we came up with some consultating okay, or consultation mechanisms in some spheres like political sphere, economic sphere and further that led to increasing of trade and as well as investment 
and even that build people to people contacts people to people uh, culture okay etc so these are some important areas regarding this joint action plan of 2005 and recently in 2020 we came up with 15th india european union summit and this summit which led further strengthening of partnership over the next five years and in this way here in this fifth summit of india and european union they focus especially on five domains so in which areas they focused they focused on foreign policy and security cooperation between india and european union they focused on trade and economy sustainable modernization partnership global governance people to people relations so these are five areas they focused on this 15th india european summit and if you are talking about some areas of cooperation first we need to talk about economic partnership between india and european union so as you all know the trade between this india and european union between 2021 2022 it had been grown a very very rapidly and it like it surpassed about dollar 116 billion okay it surpassed 116 billion and if you're comparing with the us so european union is the second largest trading partner after us and it is also second destination for indian exports and there are about 6000 european companies in the country and those companies are directly or indirectly they are creating about 6 to 7 million jobs and if you're talking about in area of environment so we came up with this green strategic partnership and this green strategic partnership which is focusing on climate change which is focusing on biodiversity loss pollution and recently also came up with this india nordic summit so let me know which are the nordic countries so i already explained you about this nordic countries so let me know which are these nordic countries in the comment box so india nordic summit which mainly focused on green technologies and as well as uh, industry transformation and that will be very much helpful for sustainable and as well as inclusive growth so this is about regarding this environment and if you're talking about in this defense sphere so we are also getting some important technology from this european union so because of this that will help to reduce our dependence on this russia where we are getting some defense related technology okay and india and european union regularly conduct joint military and as well as naval exercise so let me know the name of india military india and european union military exercise and india and european union naval exercise in the comment box so the second question of the day and next one here is we also came up with maritime security dialogue between india and european union in 2021 and in this maritime security dialogue we focused on this indo-pacific region so they especially focused on free open and sustainable indo-pacific region and they focused on awareness capacity building and joint naval activities in this indo-pacific region so this is about regarding defense and if you're talking about uh, startups and innovation so in this startups and innovation also we are growing okay growing relationship between india and european union and if you are talking about this science and technology so we have joint steering committee and it is mainly focusing on some areas like healthcare artificial intelligence earth sciences as well and in 2020 there was an agreement for research and development cooperation and they are focusing on peaceful use of nuclear energy as well so now let us focus on this challenges between india and european union ties yes india which is very much reluctant to explicitly condemn this russia's intervention in ukraine so because of this is one of the area of concern between india and european union so not only this even even european union which is mainly muted it is not having proper response during this galvan clash that happened at this line of actual control okay so these are some differing areas between india and european area union so this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic and this is about conflict over nagorno karabakh region so this topic is also important from your international relations which comes under your gs paper too so now let us try to see this topic in detail so if you see context it mainly says that so this is the issue between armenia and azerbaijan 
okay it is an issue between this armenia and azerbaijan so recently there is eruption of conflict so this conflict is a very 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 old conflict but recently what happened there is again the conflict which started between this armenia and azerbaijan regarding this nagorno karabakh region so this had been the center of three major wars and multiple clashes that are happening between these two countries armenia and azerbaijan for decades so actually why the news so recently there is a flare up began on august 3rd after azerbaijan which claimed that it had captured territory in in, in this karabakh region so because of this so again the conflict which mainly erupted so if you look at the map i think you can see the map on the screen right so in the map here you can see here we have azerbaijan here we have armenia and this red color region here is nagorno karabakh region so if you are talking about the countries to present nearby this armenia azerbaijan war here georgia is there here russia here turkey here iran and you have to see those for sure and if you are talking about what is this nagorno karabakh region actually it is a mountainous and heavily forested region and even if you are talking about under international law so this nagorno karabakh region which is recognized as part of azerbaijan but what happened in this region especially so they are inhabited by this ethnic armenians and ethnic armenians they constitute the heavy or majority of population in this nagorno karabakh region and they rejected this azerbaijan so after azerbaijan troops they were pushed out of the region following the war in 1990s and ethnic armenians they have been administered to control over this nagorno karabakh region and these people they are giving support for this armenia not for this azerbaijan okay so this is about some issue, uh, some facts regarding this nagorno karabakh region so actually international law which says that it is belonging to azerbaijan but population who are present in this region they were armenians and they mainly pushed out this azerbaijan troops and they came up with administrative control and they are supporting this armenia okay and they are also getting support from this armenia so what is the strategic significance of this nagorno karabakh region so why there is a fighting or clash between this armenian and azerbaijan they are happening because of this region so actually this azerbaijan it is energy rich and this azerbaijan which mainly built some gas and as well as oil pipelines and these mainly passes okay through this region okay so if there is any issue just happening they will be targeting this pipelines so whenever these pipelines are targeted that will impact the energy supplies and as well as that will leads to heavier oil prices globally so this is the significance of this uh, nagorno karabakh region so this is a very very important because it is related to the international or we can see like global thing okay so globally the oil prices will be raised and if you are talking about what is the background so what led to the genesis of this conflict so actually this conflict which belongs or which is traced back to this a pre soviet era so in this region so when it is region it was at the meeting point of ottoman empire russian and persian empires so what happened once is azerbaijan and armenia they become part of the soviet republic in 1921 so if here what happened the erstwhile soviet union gave this nagorno karabakh region to this azerbaijan okay so in 1980s what happened soviet power was receding there is decreasing of power of the soviet union and in 1991 disintegration of this ussr what happened right so because of this decreasing of the power of the soviet union so here separatist currents they are picked up in this nagorno karabakh region and in 1988 national assembly voted to dissolve this region as autonomous status and they want to join this armenia but here azerbaijan it is not accepting for this that lead to military conflict in this region so this is about background this is about the facts and even so what has happened and what led to this conflict and now let us try to say next topic it is regarding the controversial visit of chinese vessel to hamman tota so this article is important from your gs paper to under international relations and now let us try to see this topic in detail and most of the articles of today's newspaper that we are covering it is from international relations itself okay and from international relations you can expect only the current affairs based questions but not static based questions and now let us try to see why it is in news so on august 13th sri lanka approved the arrival of this chinese satellite tracking vessel 
to its southern Chinese funded Hamman Tota port. Yes, you know about this Hamman Tota port, right? It is located in this Sri Lanka. So this Hamman Tota port which developed by this uh, Chinese itself and because of this development of this Hamman Tota port that led to that trap of Sri Lanka. So now economic crisis is seen in Sri Lanka. So one important cause behind that is Chinese involvement in this Hamman Tota port. So on this August 13th, China, this Sri Lanka approved that arrival of this Chinese satellite tracking vessel to this Hamman Tota port. So because of this India which had expressed some cause of concern over this Chinese vessel visit and our Minister of External Affairs, they commented that carefully monitors any development having a bearing on its security and economic interest. So whenever if you see the location of Sri Lanka, so here it is located, right? So whenever Chinese ship it is coming in this region, it is also affecting the safety and security and territorial integrity of India. So here because of this, he, India which mainly expressed some cause of concern. And China reacted strongly after they were asked to defer the vessel visit. Okay. So China said that it was completely unjustified for certain countries to cite so-called security concern. And because of the security concern, they are pressuring this Sri Lanka and China also reacted strongly regarding this issue. And now let us try to say next topic it is regarding corruption and nepotism. So our country facing twin challenges, that is two challenges. Our Prime Minister said, so those two challenges, the first one is corruption, second one is nepotism or favoritism. So this article is important from our society point of view, which comes under GS paper too. So now, let us try to see this topic in detail. So if you see, why it is in news? So our Prime Minister, he addressed country on this Independence Day. And in this context, our Prime Minister, he said that we are entering into decisive phase in its war against corruption. So we are going to fight against corruption. And in this context, our Prime Minister said nepotism and misagony, they are some of the other big challenges that need to be addressed in our country. So he also said that our nation has proved that we have an inherent strength from our diversity and common thread of patriotism makes India unshakable. Yes, we have inherent strength and this strength we got from di by uh, diversity. For example, we have different religions, we are living together, we have different languages, right? So we are having uh, scheduled languages, we are having official languages, right? Okay, so here we are having number of tribal languages and we are having different religions, okay? We are living together. So with this diversity, yes, we are having inherent strength. And we are connected through a thread of patriotism, right? And he also said that India, the mother of democracy. So you can use this statements whenever you are writing your mains answer. So the prime minister also gave a call for setting up big resolution and he spelled out Panch Pran. Okay, he's come ac across his five results and these five results, they will help to fulfill the dreams of freedom fighters for our country by 2047. So on this 2047, we are going to celebrate centenary celebrations of independence. Okay, that is still 25 years is there, right? So here in this 25 years, so we need to take some steps, especially to fulfill the dreams of our freedom fighters. So those five pledges or the first one here is, they are focusing on removing any trace of colonial mindset. So we need to focus on developed India and taking pride in our legacy, our strength of unity, fulfilling the duties of citizens with honesty and which should be done by prime minister and chief ministers as well. So what are the things you are saying? Yes, they have to also follow them. So in this context, our prime minister, he dedicated a big part of speech on hitting out about corruption. So he said that yes, some people, they are having good amount of illicit money. So this illicit money, they earned through some illicit activities. Okay, and some people in the country, they do not have even enough space to live. Okay, he said that there is a huge level of corruption and unaccounted cash and other assets are present and these are coming out through the rights. And the nepotism which harms India's talents and capabilities. So whenever there is a favoritism, so if I have, uh, if I know one person and if I want to give the job to the other person, so I have to compromise on the merit. Right. So here that will be having some impact on the institutional organization itself. So nepotism which harms India's talents and capabilities 
so this is also a reason for the corruption in the country okay so this is about this topic and i want to make a small announcement here we in rathod science we came up with this prelims test series and once test had been done and the second test we are going to conduct tomorrow at 10 o'clock so in this test series we are providing third day test which includes gs and also csat so this test series is very very helpful to understand how questions will be asked and how tricky the questions will be and whether you are in a good direction or not and you this will be helpful to practice elimination techniques also so this course is absolutely beneficial so try to join this course okay and the cost of this course is just 300 3000 rupees that means you will be having 30 test okay 30 test so in this 30 test you will be getting 3000 questions and for this 3000 question you are paying just 3000 that is just 1 rupee for one question so this is a very very economic and it is also very much affordable so don't try to take any choice so we are not uh, compromising on the quality so quality of the questions will be very good and they are as per the standards of upsc so try to join this course and if you have any doubts you can call me on this number this 8074765513 and even you can text me on whatsapp on this number also okay to go and to purchase this course you can visit our website rathorsaisacademy.com there you have to register with your email id and you can go for payment process okay so now let us have a look over other articles which are appeared in other sources title says changing context of caste so this caste is very important topic from our indian society and this topic is important from your gs paper too and this is exclusively important from your mains so you can't expect any prelims based questions from this topic caste so actually this topic which appeared in the yesterday's newspaper itself but because of time limit i can't take the topic yesterday and now we are going to see this topic in detail so if the topic is important i am going to cover in the at least the next days analysis don't worry about that so i'm not going to leave anything so if you see context here on the eve of 75 years since independence author gives the evolution of changing contours of caste system in india so here what happened so from this 75 years onwards how caste had been changed so this is the thing which mainly focused by author so what is a caste caste which is having a different definition so if you are from the sociology background social option background so you might be knowing about the different uh, uh, authors regarding this caste so caste is a form of social stratification which characterized by endogamy endogamy means so the marriage which is which is happening between the between the same caste group so they will be not going outside and they will be also seeing that hereditary transmission of the style of life so what is the style of life that mainly seen in the first generation that can be seen in the second generation third generation fourth generation like that so there is a hereditary transmission of style of life that is seen so this is a called as caste endogamy means marriage within the groups they are not going for the marriage with the different groups that is called as exogamy so caste today is active in three main ways so today also this caste is present so for example if you are going for inter caste marriages so this inter caste marriages it become trend now because of this love marriages so if you want to go for inter caste marriage so there is a one issue that comes into picture here is honor killings honor killings yes in hyderabad also there are number of honor killings that happened from last two, two years there is increase the trend of honor killings so if you are talking about how this caste is active in this society in how it present so the, it is also a source of inequality so this caste which regulates the distribution of material opportunity of or, or life life chance etc so because of this it is leading to the inequality so it is a source of inequality and next one here is it is a source of political mobilization so why it is called as social uh, it is a, it is called as source of political mobilization so here even the caste politics are now far more disaggregated and it is all it is like a very complex and uncertain okay so in the political mobilization also we are using this caste for getting votes next one is it is also a source of kinship so for every one ex- except a small upper class or upper class elite caste continues to be in the form of community offering 
It is also a sense of kinship, belongingness and identity. So if you are doing any function, you are mainly calling your relatives but not the other groups, right? So it is also a source of kinship. And if you are talking about what are the measures or taken to reduce the caste inequality. So first one here we need to talk about constitutional provisions. So in our constitution there are some articles talking about today to reduce this caste inequality. So first one here is right to equality that is all or equal before the eyes of law. And article 15 talks about there should be no discrimination on the grounds of religion, race, caste, sex, place of birth. And as well as article 16 talks about equal opportunity in public employment without any discrimination. And article 38 of DPSP says that state to minimize inequalities in income, status, facilities and opportunities so that state can provide some opportunities for the people. And article 46 talks about to promote educational and economic interest of the weaker sections of society. For example, scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and as well as uh, some OBCs. Okay, so this article 46 talks about the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. And not only this constitutional protections, but even legislative measures are there. So government came with a number of laws or acts. For example, Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Act of 2019. So it is focusing on transgender. They were discriminated as Dalits in India. And this one here is Prohibition of Employment as Manual Scavengers and their Rehabilitation Act of 2013. So it is focusing on manual scavenging. And recently government came up with Namaste. Okay, it is regarding the enumeration of this uh, sanitation workers or manual scavengers. And this one is SCST Atrocities Act of 1989. So which mainly focuses on uh, atrocities which are happening against the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. And government also came up with Protection of Civil Rights Act of 1955. So these are some important things that you have to know about this caste. And now let us see the main practice question. Discuss detailed features of caste system in India. Also identify various reasons for strengthening of caste based identity in today's times. So answer should not be more than 250 words. So try to write this answer. So let me know one thing. So I am giving daily at least one or two main questions in this analysis. So how many of you are trying to write answer for this? So let me know in the comment box. So don't forget about this and please do honest reply, honest comments. Okay. So now let us try to see next topic is regarding the fastest growing economy in the world. So this article is also very important. So this is talking about India's economy. So this article is important from your economy point of view which comes under GS paper 3. And this topic is important from your mains and also from your interview point of view. And if you see the context why it is in news, it is talking about India's economy since last 75 years. So the time of independence, yes, we were the newborn, new nation at that time. So here we were impoverished by this colonial exploitation at that time. And at that time, because of this poverty and exploitation by this colonial rule, so we were exclusively dependent on the foreign aid. That is the help from the other countries for food and as this forex resource. And at that time, life expectancy was just 32 years. And the literacy levels is also Ill, uh, low. That means illiteracy is very, very high at that time. But if you are talking about the status today, how we have developed from last 75 years onwards. Yes, India became the third largest economy in the world. In terms of, for example, PPP, that is purchasing power parity. In terms of nominal exchange rate of dollar. And also India is the second largest economy in the world. And this one is growth rate. So India is also showing average growth rate of about 7% per annum from the past 40 years onwards. And the foreign exchange. So India holds 5th largest stock of foreign exchange. And here India is also net lender to International Mon Monetary Fund. Okay, IMF. So he le net lender. So India is having good stock of foreign exchange. And India which became, okay, which had the stage or which is in the stage of uh, providing some lend, okay, providing or lending some foreign exchange to this IMF also. And extreme poverty, so the level of extreme poverty is down sharply by nearly 50 percentage. 
and the life expectancy which has been doubled when you are comparing with this 1947. And if you are talking about this balance of payment, so earlier in 1980s to 1990s, so we have this balance of payment crisis. But now India which became the balance of payment surplus country and it is a one of the rare Asian country with persistent current account deficit and also imports always exceeds the exports. But even though we have this balance of payment surplus, so this is one important achievement that we got. And this one here is strong fundamentals of economy. So for investor confidence, we are mainly focusing and actually so because of this we are also attracting good amount of investments into our country and we are also having high exports and we are doing extremely good in this pharmaceutical sector and as well as service sector and we are also the one of the country who are receiving the highest remittances so indian workers send nearly 100 billion dollars as remittances that strengthens our indian economy and this one here is there is also improving of unicorns okay they are like commerce okay they belongs to this e-commerce and there is a growth of e-commerce and digital play payments and also widening of industrial base which is happening in india and in agriculture also we are having some consistent growth so agriculture is much less dependent on the vagaries of well weather and as well as diversification but we are having good growth of even animal husband and as well as agriculture but even though we are facing some issues so what are those issues so first one is unemployment which is a very high and it's one of the huge challenge that we are facing and youth they are still scramble for the government jobs so recently one data says that about 220 million indians they applied for just 7 lakh government jobs in the past 7 years so now you can understand the unemployment rate in india and labor force participation rate is also very very low and job creation is priority number okay one okay first we need to focus on this job uh, job creation and nearly 70 percentage of industrial jobs they are vulnerable and they are going to become extinct because of automation because of artificial intelligence because of robotics it is also one important fear that we see in our economy and there is high levels of hunger so even though government came up with this public distribution system and it is uh, providing some free food grains and is focusing on anganwadi centers to ensure the nutrition for this pregnancy lactation and children so even though we are seeing there is a high level of hunger and even recent world hunger index uh, ranking is also abscess one it is a very very low for india and we are also seeing there is inequality in income inequality in wealth and access to the quality health care and education is also seen and this one here is there is also uh, there is also like uh, export led growth so india is also missing like a bus so especially we are not focusing on this manufacturing but we are focusing on the service sector so now let me give you one more main practice question evaluate the performance of indian economy in last 75 years since independence has it been able to uh, able to live up to the initial expectations so this type of questions 100 percent sure you can get in this year's paper three for sure regarding what is the condition of seven uh, india's economy from last 75 years what is the condition of indian polity from last 75 years so what are the achievements that we saw so in these areas yes 100 percent you can expect the question in your mains so please be prepared with these topics the students who are going to target this 2023 upsc so now let us try to say next topic is regarding nano urea okay nano urea sales reached 11.2 million bottles so far this fiscal so this article talking about nano urea so yes this topic is important from your science and technology which comes under your gs paper 3 and now so what is this nano urea first of all so urea it is a chemical fertilizer correct so actually it is white in color and it is artificially providing nitrogen phosphorus and potassium okay which is very much required for the plants they are the macronutrients so whenever we are going for this liquid nano urea so here urea it is in the form of a nanoparticle right and it is also patented chemical nitrogen fertilizer and it produced by ifco so it is about nano urea urea is a chemical nitrogen fertilizer and it is white in color and in this nano urea urea is present in the nanoparticles nano size 10 power minus 9 so if you're talking about what are the benefits of this nano urea the cost of this nano urea it is cheaper okay it is just 240 for half liter without subsidy and international market price of bag of urea it is between 3500 to 4000 
and bottle of uh, nano urea it can effectively replace at least one bag of urea so here the cost is very very low and this one here is it is also a benefit for the government because the subsidy it is going to given by this uh, government for the farmers it will be reduced and this one here is the efficiency of this nano urea it is a more compared to that of this conventional urea and nano urea which has a self shelf life which is a more okay shelf life of a year and farmer should not take any concern or should not be worried about the caking whenever it comes in contact with the moisture also and if you are talking about other some more benefits of this nano urea so fertilizers uh, in this nano form provide the targeted supply of nutrients okay so that what happened it will not leads to any wastage and also reduced unbalanced indiscriminate use of conventional urea so it also increased the crop productivity by 8% and even it have ability to reduce soil water and air pollution so this is about this topic and here you can see the information so this is a 50 kg bag of urea and it will be equal to 50 ml of this nano urea so here this liquid urea which is having the potential benefits that reduce inputs cost that will be like environment friendly it will not lead to any uh, pollution like water pollution soil pollution air pollution so it improves the nutritional values for the plants it also increases the farmer's income it also enhances the crop productivity and it is a cheaper than the conventional urea okay so it is like eco-friendly liquid fertilizer so this is about this topic and now let us try to the next topic is regarding Augusta Malay landscape so Tamil Nadu notifies fifth elephant reserve in this Augusta Malay landscape so this topic is important from your GS paper 3 under environment and ecology so now let us try to see why it is in news. So central government has notified Augusta Malai Elephant Reserve. Okay. So central government has notified Augusta Malai Elephant Reserve as India's 31st Elephant Reserve. So it is India's 31st Elephant Reserve and in this state it is a 5th Elephant Reserve. So if you are talking about what are the benefits. So whenever there is a declaration of so and so area as an elephant reserve. So forest department though so they are now going to get some additional financing okay and it will be helpful for the development of that region and the uh, it also will helps to connect their populations to other areas as well. So if you are focusing on some facts regarding this Augusta Malai Biosphere Reserve it is situated in the southernmost end of Western Ghats region and it is named after this Augusta, Augusta Malai Peak which mainly rises up to 1868 meters above the sea level in this Kerala and in March 2016 it, it also included in this world network of biosphere reserves of UNESCO and especially it covers some important wildlife sanctuaries like Pepera and Sheridange wildlife sanctuary and Naya sanctuary in Kerala, Kalakad, Mundathurai uh, tiger reserve of Tamil Nadu as well and this is very much special for this uh, Kanikaran tribe they are the oldest surviving ancient tribes in the world okay so these are some important facts and let us have a look over the map so this is the map so here we have Nilagiris and at the bottom here we have Adagasta Malai so above that we have Periyar we have Allamalai here we have Nilambur okay here we have Nilagiris, Mudu Malai, Bandipur okay so these are some important places that you have to know and these are the elephant distribution so now let us try to see the prelims practice questions today so first one here it is regarding wetland and location so this is very very important the first one is Hokera Hokera it is not in Punjab it is in Jammu and Kashmir and Renuka which is seen in Himachal Pradesh yes Rudrasagar it is in Tripura yes and Satakam Kota Lake it is not in Tamil Nadu so correct answer it is B2 only two pairs and topic of day is wetland biodiversity so here wetland okay so wetlands are very very important for our ecosystem maintenance so it is helpful for the climate because 30 percentage of land based carbon which is stored in the peat lands and will be also one of the important source for the clean water swamps marshes they remove the pollutants and when here is it will be also helpful for providing the employment for example 1 million people they depend on the wetlands for their livelihoods and it is also helpful for the economy because here wetlands they provide US dollar 47 billion it is in the essential services yearly so if we are talking about whenever there is a loss of wetlands that will lead to the loss of biodiversity okay so if you are talking about key drivers of this wetland loss are so what are the important causes for the wetland loss that is pollution, drainage and land conservation okay 
So these are the some key drivers of this wetland loss. So this is about this uh, topic and now let's try to focus on vocabulary. So defer means to choose to do something at the late uh, time. So I'm not going to do it now but in the late but I think I may do it in tomorrow or after tomorrow that is meaning of defer. And as well as splashed. Splashed means cause to strike or fall on something in irregular drops. So it's cause to strike or fall on something in irregular drops. Next one is overwhelm. So overwhelm means have a strong emotional effect. So you are going to have a strong emotional effect on. So this is the vocabulary. So now let us try to see so today's Hindu newspaper PDF. So this is our Hindu. Okay, date here is August 16th okay date is August 16th and this is Delhi edition so first topic it is regarding Iran denies role but justifies attack on this Salman Rushdie so actually what happened the former supreme leader had issued what war against writer so an Iranian government official denied that Tehran was involved in the assault of author Salman Rushdie though he Justify the stabbing in remarks that represented Islamic Republic's first public comments on attack. So it is about the attack, okay, and it is regarding the Salman Rushdie. So actually, it is not much important. Just as for uh, for your knowledge, so I said this topic, but it is not at all important. And next topic is regarding corruption and nepotism. I discussed this topic. And if you move forward here, you can see aim to create 20 lakh jobs. It is a thing which mainly said by Nitish. So day ahead of Bihar's government cabinet expansion. So if you are from Bihar, you have to focus on this 26, 20 lakh jobs and in which areas you are going to provide. And next one is with Gandhi 75 years after Freedom Hall. So actually this Gandhi Bhavan which located in the Kolkata which felt as lonely on this occasion okay which had been held in 1947 which had been 1947 and next one here is you can leave these pages and you can just move on to the state page so in the state page here you can see constitutional values need to be protected okay so you have to focus on what are those constitutional values for example secularism social justice equality etc and if you move forward in this editorial page, uh, you can go through this topic that is meeting aspirations and you can talk about this northeast integration. So here, here, here we have to focus on insurgency, insurgency in this northeastern region. And if you move forward, I discussed about this India-European ties. And in this text and context, I discussed about this Nagorno-Karabakh region. And I also discussed about this Chinese vessel in this Hamantota port and here you can see one interesting image so here you i can uh, I, I can see one flower i think you can also see that same flower on the screen so what is this flower what is the name of this flower and what is the speciality of this flower let me know in the comment box so this will be very important from your environment and ecology and this page number 10 you can see fundamental duties key to social transformation it is a thing which mainly said by cji that is nb ramana sir he said that fundamental duties in the constitution they are not merely to serve this uh, pedantic and or technical purpose they are meant to guide the citizens okay so this is very important and if you move forward in this page page number 12 here you can see a uh, panel moots a uh, district level survey to bring more children into adoption ambit so this adoption is also very very important and here you have to know about CARA that is Child Adoption uh, Resource Authority. So here you have to focus that will be important for your prelims. And if you move on in this page number 13 here you can see China announces new military drills. This topic is also important from your GS paper 2 under international nations. And next topic here is India gives this dronier aircraft to Sri Lanka and you have to know about what is this dronier aircraft and some facts regarding this aircraft that will be important from your prelims. South Korea offers North aid for denuclearization. Okay, so this topic is also very important. Okay, South Korea which is mainly going to provide some assistance. Okay, and next topic here it is like state signal intent to write capex spend. So it is talking about capital expenditure. So in our recent budget also they said that they are going to increase this capital expenditure and you have to see in which areas they are going for spending okay so this article is important and if you move forward here oil slides by dollar uh, dollar one a barrel as china economy slows so this article is also important and these are some important articles that appear in our today's hindu newspaper so by this i'm concluding 
so if you really like this video hit the like button and try to share this video to your friends also and if you're new to this Rathor Science Academy channel so try to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you will be getting regular notifications whenever we are uploading the video so by this I'm concluding thank you so much and have a nice day